was, uh, and it, it wasn't even close. So uh, apparently computers are going to rule over us all in just a matter of a few years. So, uh, you know, I, and I'll put in a good word for them with all of you. They can speak to me because uh, I was around when they first took over. Um, the question was, is it weird playing against a computer? Uh, yes, because I'm not used to losing. And uh, also because uh, it really was, it was kind of similar to this monitor right here, or actually even more so the one down here. It was kind of just a flat screen TV turned right side up with a little avatar on it. And it had this weird disembodied voice like, uh, I'll take Potpourri for 1200 you know, and uh, you're used to having a person there, um, but the, the thing that was really weird about it was that it was really fast on the buzzer, and uh, it was a computer that could figure out the answer to a Jeopardy question within the time that it takes Alex Trebek to read the question, which is really impressive, and that's never been done before. Uh, yes? <laughs> uh, no, uh, actually, there's plenty of federal laws and regulations and oversight uh, on any kind of game show competition, and this was the same way. So there were lawyers all over the place making sure everything was fair, and uh, I have every confidence that uh, it was a fair matchup that the computer just won. Yes? Did they figure out why he said that the U.S. city was Toronto? Uh, uh, she asked me whether they figured out why uh, Watson said that the U.S. city was Toronto. And uh, the IBM people said a couple different things. First of all, their, their first line of defense was, well, there are several cities named Toronto in the United States. That, but yeah, not many that have two airports. But basically what it came down to was that in the practice matches that they were playing with Watson in the lead up to all this, um, they found out that the category in Final Jeopardy often doesn't have anything to do with the correct answer. So uh, the category could be U.S. cities, and then uh, it could be uh, Buffalo was the western terminus of this you know, started in 1825, and they were looking for the Erie Canal, which also is a U.S. city. So uh, they found out that the category didn't have a lot of correlation with what the question was actually going to be. So they, and Watson had embarrassed itself earlier by not getting stuff like that, by being wrong on the other side. Then it would have said, like, Rochester for that, when it was clearly the wrong answer. So it kind of, this was one of the few times where the, they were actually looking for a U.S. city in U.S. cities, and that came back to like Watson. Yes? Did they get the money? What's that? Did they get the money? The, actually, well, Watson, uh, IBM did get the money, but they did donate it all to charity. Uh, so, so, yeah, uh, IBM uh, doesn't have uh, any need for an extra million dollars. Oh, second. Sure. Brad donated half of his to charity also. That's true, too. <laughs> so not only are computers smarter than us now, they're also more charitable. <laughs> Uh, in the front here. Uh, what's the largest amount of money that you made in one game? Um, well, I did win. Uh, there was a tournament a couple years ago where I won $2 million, but it was over three games. But it was sort of like a cumulative thing, so whoever won those three games would win $2 million. So that would answer that, I suppose. Yes? When did you learn that you were uh, talented in, in general knowledge? Primary school or? Uh, the, the question was, when did I learn that I was talented in general knowledge? Um, my parents had always watched Jeopardy uh, when the Trebek version came on back in, from 84 on. And uh, so I grew up watching it. And then by the time I was in, I guess, middle school or high school, I'd say, I found out that, yeah, you know, I know most of the answers here. So I should probably try to get on the show. And uh, I thought I would probably do pretty well. But if uh, you would have told me I would do as well as I actually did, I would have said you were crazy. <laughs> Uh, yes, in the back. You have a great voice and a great presence hosting. Did you, did you come from an uh, entertainment background or theatrical background? Um, the question is, I have a, well, I'll, I'll leave the compliments out of it. But uh, thank you. Uh, whether I come from a theatrical or uh, entertainment background. I don't come from a theatrical or entertainment background, but that is the business I'm in now. So, uh, yes, I, I live up in Hollywood, and I have uh, a lot of the game show concept I'm pitching around. I have a history or discovery channel uh, concept. And uh, I also do improv in Second City. So uh, that's too, uh, the adult subject matter is probably too, uh, you know, too risque for most of the kids. But, hey, uh, adults, come check us out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes? Uh, do I have a photographic memory? I, uh, I wouldn't say so. Um, I, it's kind of just the, the analogy I like to use is flypaper. 
Whereas if I'll drag my mind through a book or a magazine or something, it'll pick up a couple things that I find interesting, and then they'll be right there on the flypaper for me to grab whenever that comes up again. But in terms of like looking at a page of a book and being able to read it back to you, no. But if I read that page, I'll probably have two or three things that'll stick with me uh, for a long time. And our last question. Yes, you, right in the middle. Yes. Uh, my favorite Jeopardy category that I ever had would probably have to be, um, they have a, there's a category that comes up a lot on Jeopardy uh, called before and after, where it, that's where you combine, you know, two answers into one. Um, so, uh, I can give you an example. Uh, this is harder than it looks like off the cuff. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, uh, okay. Um, they might say something like the uh, the the New York area where uh, the uh, Chandlers and Otis's set up their paper, and they, so the answer would be Los Angeles Times Square, say so Los Angeles Times and Times Square in New York. But uh, in the ultimate tournament that I was just talking about uh, a few years ago, they had one called Before, During, and After, where you combine three answers into one. So. Uh, uh, and just to give you an example, one question that I got was uh, the first female uh, host of the NFL today, uh, who also uh, who also uh, invented the uh, a plan to uh, relieve Europe after World War II, um, and uh, recorded uh, the uh, <laughs> and uh, recorded uh, and it is also a Detroit rapper, and uh, the um, the name it ended up being Phyllis George. Uh, Phyllis, Phyllis George Marshall Mathers. So Phyllis George, George Marshall, Marshall Mathers, all in one thing. Big round of applause again for our contestants. Everybody,